you have a prepaid call from an inmate at Southern Correctional Facility, California. This call and your telephone number will be monitored and recorded. To accept this call, say or dial 5 now. Thank you for your... This is Juby. Yeah, this is Juby. How are you doing, brother? I got into a fight uh, the, uh, a while back. Man, so full sucker punched me, and I was like, oh, you big head. And I, I got into it with him, and I was like, I'm not even like that no more. I try to, I try to kick back. Where you go by? Uh, my name is Bad Boy from Sacramento, Radio Franklin Boulevard, Sacramento, California, and Daniels. What's your Thank nationality? You know, that was my, um, my nationality, I'm Mexican, Puerto Rican, and Italian. I got, I got three cold bloods in me. And uh, where are you from out on the streets again? Barrio Franklin Boulevard. It's in a, a place called Oak Park. The, they're actually uh, uh, brothers. They're bloods. But I grew up in a blood neighborhood all my life. Uh, what made you join? What made me join? I, I kind of like I jumped into it. They, uh, this girl named Kinks, but she was real good looking. They used her to get me to walk home from school with her. And when I walked off from school, I was walking up the tracks and down the tracks, and I was already addicted to seeing people, you know, our cholo out back, back then when we were, we were cholos, and we used to wear Pendleton's and the, the Dickies or con with Converse and shit like that. And uh, I just I just got fascinated by the way their their, their lifestyle was and, and making money and doing different things. So I just, uh, I was young, and I, I, I was climbing, uh, going up the... the uh, train tracks and down the train tracks around the train tracks and there's like a, a, a grassy area with the uh it's, it's almost close to a curtis park a place called curtis park and uh they uh, they, they surrounded me and they were like you want to get joined in the, you want to get joined in the fight going i was like yeah so they started fucking hitting me and uh, you know i was fighting back they're like you gotta fight back homie because the reason why we do this is to initiate initiate you is to see if you're gonna run if it's if, if, if other game uh like start fucking with you or if you stand there and fight, you know? So they, they, they do it for three minutes and you just fucking gotta take take the blows and keep fighting back. Fight you you fight three people though. And uh I got jumped into it, but I lived in my neighborhood. A lot of people don't have to get jumped into it. But I did. I don't know why they jumped me in but they wanted to then they gave me a black rag which stood for thirty some place called thirty sixth street. It's where everybody from Franklin, my neighborhood, they live. That's our street. That's what we represent on 36th Street. And I was, I got into that. And uh, that's about it, pretty much, right there. But about that. This call and your telephone number will be monitored and recorded. My dad grew up in Bay Area in Oakland and all that shit, but uh, yeah, he just passed away, so I've been kind of butthurt about that. He's the one that, he's the one that, he's the one that, he used to be in North Daniel, but he stopped being a long ass time ago. He stopped doing that, and he got a job for DMV, Department of Motor Vehicles, and he, and he, uh, and he did a good job being a father and shit, and he, being there for me, and he was trying to get me to get out and, and get a job and stuff. He, he was trying to get me to get right with the Lord while I was in here. I told him, I'm not really, I, I told him the Jehovah's Witnesses and all that blame me. I don't know why, but somebody, uh, maybe it was my sister, because she's old, and, they try to get me to believe in God. I said, there ain't nothing wrong with believing in God. I believe there's a God, but I'm not all holy. And uh, I believe he accepts me as I am, so I'm still fucking, I still cuss, and, you know, I mean, smoke cigarettes and uh, whatnot, but, uh, yeah, I'm still, uh, I'm still going through the learning process of being, being not being a gang member anymore. And there's a lot of stuff, be, uh, like right here, it's hella cool. They don't, they don't trip off you. There's only a couple of dudes from up north right here, but, but I tell him, I don't, I don't really play that shit no more, man. But one time this dude kept telling me, I don't get along with guys from the north. And I was like, what the fuck am I supposed to do? So I just bombed on him. And I was like, oh, I, I don't want to do this shit no more, man. But they keep pu pulling me back into this shit. And, and I was already stopped banging. And I was already done banging. And, and, he, and I just said, fuck you. He wants to fight me over this shit where I'm from. Or where I used to be from then. I'm going to have to get off on his ass for him. I fucking take off on his ass. But, uh... Uh, yeah, I'm trying to, I'm trying real hard not to fuck up no more, man. I want to, I want to, uh, I wrote UCLA College, and I told them they could use me because they sent us all these, uh, this, uh, thing with, uh, pay, I don't know if Flacco told you, they had paper, uh, deal, uh, like, I think deal, uh, toothpaste, Colgate, toothpaste, cinnamon, Colgate, toothpaste, 
uh, some pencils, some colored pencils, and, and, and drawing pads for people that, that like to do art. And then they had uh, Shoot Knight, because Shoot Knight used to be here. And uh, they had him in the background, and him with the ice and Jahu, and they, they were giving him, they were asking him questions like you're asking me. And it gives, it gives his little spiel right there of what he did. It's on a little packet they gave us, the packet with along with the other stuff that came in. And it was pretty cool, man, but I wrote them, they told me they, they're called a Project Rebound Program. So I was like, man, I want to get into that. And then they got this guy, his name is John Batista, or some shit like that. He's an ex skinhead And uh, he's, he's, he's in uh, Esquire magazine, GQ magazine. His, his, his skills are so up to par, like his writing skills. Like, I could write better. I, if, if I could write something to you, that would be a lot better. I'm, I'm better with, with when I sit down and I think about my thoughts. I'm 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 uh, I'm kind of swift on my feet, but uh, I'm uh it's kind of hard. It, it'll be kind of hard for me to answer questions, but I can answer them the best I can to you, Drew. Okay, what are you convicted of, and how long was your sentence? I was convicted of first degree murder from Sacramento, California. My sentence was two twenty-five to life sentences. I got two 25 to life sentences plus three years, so they gave me 53 years to life. They gave me 25 to life for a first degree murder, and they gave me 25 to life for another ex felon utilizing a gun and a commission of crime to make a great bodily injury or, or, or death, cause death. So, yeah, the guy died. Uh, this call and your telephone number will be monitored and recorded. Actually, alive still. But he was brain dead. They was eagerly brain dead, so the his family pulled the plug on him. Because he couldn't talk or nothing. He was just alive, breathing, but he, he couldn't talk and he was already like a vegetable. So they didn't want him to live like that. So they, they pulled the plug on him. First they gave me attempted, then they gave me murder when he when they pulled the plug on him. And uh my plea was my only plea, my only defense I had was prove I did it, you know? There was people upstairs, there were like five people upstairs. There was two, uh, one person in the bathroom downstairs with us, and she told them that I was, first she said that some guy in a green hoodie sh shoe shot him and ran out. And then she changed her story around and said, um, I was the only one out there with him, partying with him, and we were snoring coke and shit, and, uh, and we were drinking. And she was in the bathroom and she heard a gunshot go off. It was only one single gunshot. And they were wondering how he had three holes in his head. And there was only one gunshot. And then somebody said they happened to see me with a gun that had, that was able to take a baby shotgun shell, which is a Derringer, uh, a Derringer weapon. It's called a 410. It takes a baby shotgun shell. It's like a little small miniature baby shotgun shell. And it takes a 45 caliber bullet. It, it's a pretty, it's a pretty, uh, powerful handgun. It's like one of the powerful handguns you can see. And, uh, yeah, it, it um, uh, what? Oh, I thought you were talking about it. And, uh, yeah, man, so somebody said they seen me with this, so they convicted me off of some bullshit. But they don't have no murder weapon, no motive. They're like, this guy was friends. They, they backtracked to a place where we were on camera at a bar ready for that happen. And then they're just going by his uh, his girl saying, I think Michael shot him. I didn't see it, but I know he shot him. And so they fucking, they, they, uh, gained me 25 life. Then I fucking threw my water at the jury. <laughs> I was like, what the fuck am I supposed to do? Be happy I took my life? But my, my, my first thing was 25 life. I should have took it. But I was thinking then, I was thinking I could beat it because uh, I was, I was thinking, um, premeditated has to be a purposeful, intentional, deliberate, and a premeditated. And my shit wasn't premeditated, I just shot him, so that's not first degree murder. I didn't plot it out, I just shot him out of instinct, cause, cause, uh, he was calling, he, I heard him call some guy up and he was like, let's jack this fool, and I had two hundred dollars, I mean, two thousand dollars in my pocket and some, and some, uh, and, uh, and we're shooting it, and, uh, and, uh, so I was like, man, fuck you, man. He was like, you ready? I go, what do you mean you ready? And I had a gun on me, so I had my hand on it. And he's like, yeah, I said, you ready? And I was like, man, fuck you. And I just fucking pulled it out and I popped him. And then I regret it now, but he was a good homie, man. We were cool before that. I don't know what the fuck that is. Maybe it was the... How long have you been incarcerated? I've been incarcerated for 16 years. I'm 44 years old. I've been incarcerated for 16 years. Everybody thinks I'm in my 30s, so they're like, you look really young for age. 
I like it because it's a ponytail and shit, and then I cut my mustache for a little. But um, I think I'm like in my 30s, but I'm 44. I've been doing this for 16 years now. They got some stuff now where you got, if you're 50, if you're 50 years old and you've been down 20 years, you can go off of work. So I don't know, maybe I, I'm, I'm only hoping I'm doing small things from the laws changing and stuff like that. My mom, I go by what my mom says too. She, that's the only hope she goes by us off any new laws or anything changing. She's like, you're going to get out and show me on my tell her, don't even, don't, don't depend on it, though. Don't think that I am. Just, just think right now that I'm stuck here doing right. But I'm not, I'm going to keep swinging back in the courtroom, you know. I'm not going to let them just take my life that easy. I had a, pay, a paid attorney, my ex-girl. She was, she was doing it real good, man. She had her own house and a BMW, a black BMW. She had a fucking, uh, she sold her house and got me an attorney, a pill attorney. He was one of the uh, branches off the Johnny Cochran law firm from when they did an OJ case. But they, but he moved, he had some people move to Sacramento and they started another, uh, law firm called Einhoff and Associates. And, uh, so I, I got him, and he didn't really do shit for me, and I told him, I wrote him not too long ago, and I told him he needs to give my, my people back half of their money at least, and, uh, and uh, they said he, he moved away, he moved away. He, that, that's not his fucking, uh, he's not even in service no more. I said, man, that motherfucker, I don't know, man, he's just taking people's money and cutting, you know? When they're younger, they put a fight up, the attorneys, because they're trying to make a pull a point in the courtroom. But when they get old and they're ready, they already did their little thing, they just, I should have got someone that was younger and I should have got someone that was not from Sacramento. But, uh, he asked me, you want me to take you? Your people are paying me the money. I said, man, I guess I'll take you. And I was in Stockton County Jail for fucking assaulting us, uh, one of these correctional officers. Well, actually, I threw about a tray at him because he called me a, a B-word and shit, you know. So I threw my tray at him. And uh, then I, I threw my hot coffee at him. Then they pulled up them, the wands. And, he was, and the Mexican cop, I know, he was like, you have a ground tool? And I was like, oh. You have 60 seconds remaining. Uh, it took me a minute to call back, but I, I, I got time to call back. I've been out ever since then, but there's people that had phone times, but they're letting, making everybody go in, so I got time to call again. Oh, okay, you're cool. Um, let me ask you. Um, did, you did you know what neighborhood that was? Do you, have you ever know, do you know, you know what Oak Park is? No, because I, I, I'm, I'm, not from, uh, I'm not from up north. I'm down south. I'm from IE. Oh, okay, yeah. Okay, yeah, it's Inland Empire, eh? Yeah. Or Inland Empire? Yeah, I know that is. I know about all the because I was in uh, a YA Youth Authority. I was in Nellis, uh, Whittier Boulevard by Norwalk. And I and I know about all the gangs from down south, like Pasadena Devil Wing Bloods and all the Bounty Hunter Bloods and Crips, Common Crips and all that stuff. Because uh, I was down south, they had me a YA. We were like the second bus load of Northerners to ever go over there. They were fucking stabbed, they stabbed me in the back of the head a couple of times, cut me with a razor in my ear. And he tried to hit me in the neck, but he missed, and he, and he fucking hit me in my ear. Okay, when you first got sentenced, how you feel about it? And when you first went to prison and hit the main line, what was your mentality? Okay, when I first when I first went to prison, I was mad at the world because uh, they gave me time that I didn't feel like I was supposed to have. When I hit the main line, I got into it with a, a correctional officer, and uh, he called me on my name, and uh, he said he was from Sacramento as well as where I'm from. And he's like, Some, something, something, bitch, uh, Sacramento. Car. So I threw my tray at him. And then I was just I was just thinking of self-destruction. And then they told me that there was a child molester on the yard. So they were like, do you want to take him out? So I fucking, they, they gave me a blade and I fucking whacked him. And then uh, somebody started bombing on him. They used a bomber. The northerners, the northern, I don't know if you know how that goes, but the northerners, usually whack somebody I and mean, the, the guys that are bombing usually catch the case because the guy that you know, that wax takes off with the uh, blade, you know? So, they don't really get in trouble. I, I don't know if I should be saying shit like that on the phone, but... <laughs> You're fine, but as long as it's not criminal. I'm, right? I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not sugarcoating. I'm not going to sugarcoat that. Oh, you know, yeah, yeah, I'm you're good. I, I, I actually review it, and if it's something incriminating or something like that, then, then uh, I edit it off, so you're good. Uh, I don't uh, see okay. wrong with it. Um, uh, what exactly uh, was your position within the organization? Excuse me? What exactly was your position uh, within the organization? 
Um, my mission was to preach unity, security, and equality for the North Daniels and to end body of warfare and to end the northern uh, the northerners uh, in the different neighborhoods that are fighting each other to unite them all together and keep them together and and then they they got some shit called north on north crime if you get if you if you uh spill somebody that's red that has a red rag that's that's bleeding the same color as you then you know you're gonna get hit and uh that's what they preach unity security and call that's their main thing and, and uh i was kind of like a foot soldier but i also had positions they gave me a position uh, uh to be a building security and what my job was to do was know who everybody was in every single cell from 201 to 250 and then from 101 to 150 I got to know if it was white, black, crip, black, or Daniel Serrano. Um, got to keep the count of them every week. Um, I schooled, I schooled uh, North Daniels. They, we got a schooling that we do too and they write essays on like what's the importance of being a North Daniel and uh, just different things like that and um, uh, my, my thing was to get all that information every week and give it to another building and they send all that shit to the hole and somebody usually, we, 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 I don't know if you, have you ever seen that micro writing? Real small, real small writing? Oh yeah, 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 I know what you're talking about. Yeah, okay, then we use those and we, 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 we write real small and then roll it up and then they make us fucking put, put, it's a little fucking structured, there's those structured, little structured rundown about how they run the whole fucking, uh, they, how they run the, the main lines of main line tra- like they got some shit called main line training and in North Daniels are like they have to do stuff like they have in the hole sometimes you get like one cup one bowl and you put all your property under your bed and you gotta feel like how it feels when, a, when people first go to the hole when they get locked up and they have to do a whole program so they be doing a whole program on the line trying to uh, make it like the lines to get them ready for all the all the soldiers ready for when they go to battle and shit, and they got to go to the hole. They're already used to not having nothing inside their cell. And it's, they just, they do all kinds of shit, man. It's so crazy, man. I can tell you all kinds of shit. There's all kinds of, there's all kinds. I was building security, so I had the whole building. And I had to report to another building and then send all that information to the hole because the hole is where they run everything. Like Pelican Bay should be, uh, I don't know if Pelican Bay is still the same thing as uh, for the active North Daniels, but I know they got to report to somebody. I used to report to the, I used to report to the North Star for media, but I wasn't part of it. I was not a part of it in them. But I, I knew how to write so small that they used me like a Xerox machine. They used me to write, and then I would I would get these kites and get these letters and shit, and I would be reading them and tripping out like, damn, some of them had a couple of things on it that I wasn't supposed to read. No, I didn't want to read because it had things to do with bodies and shit, you know? And I was like, I'm cool. <laughs> I don't want to know who's going to get whacked, you know? I just fucking, I just do the simple shit. I don't even want to be doing those because I know the kites were red. They were red kites. So those are high. Those are considered high. You know, only certain people can read those. But like I said, since I would know how to, so how to write so well, and I was under the northern structure, they um, they let me do that shit. I had to report to them, and they they send all their give all their information to the Cosmologists or the NF, whatever you want to call it. Yeah, what would happen if an individual violate one of uh one of the rules? Oh, uh, he gets whacked in the uh. It depends on what it is, but he gets, uh, if you do something real bad, like, I don't know, like, just out of character, either you'll get disciplined, if it's, if it's disciplinable, they'll discipline you and make you do, like, hella burpees, hella exercise workout, like, just something that'll drain you out, and, or, or if it's bad enough, they'll just whack you in your face with a razor, it's called a puto mark, and everybody that sees that scar, like a little line across your face, knows that if you're a northerner and you got one of those, so you did something bad. Cause that's our that's our mark right there. We we, we slice people in the face with the razor. So that pretty much makes him an outcast, though, right? He, he, well, that, that pretty much ruined his name, reputation. Is there any get back to that? Yeah, nah, he's all he's through. Once you get that mark, you're through. Yeah, there ain't no coming back after the mark. Yeah, the reputation is gone. In the yard or what? Or he gets removed. Cool. Are you teaching general? 
you had to get, you know, the, 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 the slice in the face, man, and, and uh, got that mark. Of shit. Oh, yeah, his, 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 yeah, his career is through, man. He could have hella status and everything. Sometimes people used to, they used to power trip. This call and your telephone number will be monitored and recorded. There are some, there, there are some scammers people, I'm not going to say there ain't, there are some scammers people that try to take people's reps because if they hit a certain dude, they get, they get Bernie points, you know? And, and if somebody's bad and he needs to get whacked or he needs to get taken out the game, like, you know what I'm saying, like, by with a gun or something, that's another story. But, um, if they whack somebody and he got status, they get status too because I whacked me, I, I would I whacked this, uh, uh, they said that dude was a child molester. And I said, what? And then he's like, yeah, he's on the, I go, he's on the yard with us? And they go, yeah. And I go, I'm going to get him off. And they're like, what? And then he's like, I don't give a fuck. You want the, you want the razor? I was like, give me the razor. I'll cut him in his face. And so I fucking had to do that. And then they started bombing on him. I, I, I was just supposed to bomb because usually the slicer gets away with everything, you know? Slice him and then just take off and then flush that motherfucker. And then the bombers would keep him busy where he ain't even trying to, you know, if he even tries to get near you, he ain't going to get near you because we got two guys bombing on him. There's supposed to be two designated bombers and they're and one slicer. The one slices and takes off and then the bombers get him. And, uh, yeah, you're, you know, coming back after that, your name is fucked up. It's fucked up. You could have hella status and everything and still you lose, you lose all your rank. You guys get that Tomo out of the yard, or, or, or uh, where you get him at? And how you yeah, him took him, him, took him off the yard. He, he was he was trying to he was trying to. Uh, they found out when he was tweaking on the streets, he was offering some dope, and uh, he was touching on a little girl. That, that's that's what it, that's what the thing was. And somebody uh, came in that was that was affiliated and was like, yeah, he was touching my ne- my niece. I was like, how do you know this? You know, he was like, he was touching my niece personally, and I was like, oh. So I can't, you can't even question it either. I shouldn't even question it because I could have got got too. They would have gave me the beers too, but they didn't. They, knowing that they knew me and they didn't really trip off me. They're like, they know bad boy to do it. Like, just ask bad boy. <laughs> pretty much, I was pretty much crash dummy, but I, but I, I like, I like doing that shit for, um, for the, the, the northern structure and the, and the, I like being under their rule. You know? It, it, it might sound crazy, but I, I like, I like doing, putting in work, you know, I, I didn't mind. I want to, I want to help out youth and I want to help out youngsters that, uh, that are misguided and they don't understand everything that's got, because I know it, I know about blood and clear, I know about how all that shit started too. I know about that. I had to get schooled on some of that and then some of the Bay Area stuff. The Bay Area is more, they're more in the church politics. They, they, they fight over, um, over dope, dope spots and dope. And dope deals, shit like that. But uh, yeah, and uh, California Revolution or Republic and Progress Crip. I know a little bit about that. And uh, the Bloods, Brothers Leading Others Out of Destruction, B L O O D, and C R I P, and uh, some other shit. I don't know. <laughs> I forgot. It's been a while uh, since I uh, talked to anybody about stuff like that. You have 60 seconds remaining. Just stay away from the gangs, man, because you're going to end up either doing life in prison or they're going to get being killed, you know? So something to that effect. You can if you want to throw in your own words or whatever. Just just something that has to do with them joining gangs, man. And it's, it's fucked up because I'm, I'm, tra- I'm still trapped in the gang lifestyle. I still, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to help them, but I'm still trapped in, in this shit, too, man. I, I, they, people are... Uh, I didn't even this dude Dolphin on me not too long ago and I was like oh you bitch ass and I, I cracked him a couple times he took off running on me I was like why are you gonna snake on me hit me from behind and fucking and then I seen him again and he was like he started shaking my hand out real quick he put his hand out to shit. and I was like hey bro just stay away from me bro I'm, we're cool and he's like I'm cool with you man I don't know what I was thinking I'm EOP I'm, 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 I got mental problems and I was like well he, he's already getting kind of crazy and I said, well, just stay away from me because I don't want to have to fucking bomb on you, dude. Mm-hmm. I'm, trying to, I'm trying to leave this shit alone, but this motherfucker...